Hello everyone and welcome back to another guide for blood magic. Today we'll be going over all of the new items you can make in your Hellfire Forge now that you have a tier 4 altar. These include the Demon Crucible and Demon Crystallizer, the Greater Tartar Gem, and more sigils. Yay! So let's dive right into it. The Demon Crucible is made with a cauldron, a stone, a lapis, and a diamond with a common tartaric gem or higher. You'll need at least 400 demonic wheels stored in a gem and it will consume 100 of it. By taking a tartaric gem or any other item that can store demonic wheels and placing it into your demon crucible, it will drain the will from it and disperse it into the or of the chunk it is in. Keep in mind when you do this, it will only enter the current chunk that the item is in. So as you can see, since the crucible is in this chunk, it will only be dispersed in this area. And if it's placed in any others, it will be put into that one as well. And what it will do is, it will disperse until there is 100 demonic will in the chunk. And then it will stop. To find the chunk boundaries, simply press F9 and it will show you exactly what chunk the aura is being dispersed in. One way to use this aura is with the Demon Crystallizer, which is made with a Hellfire Forge, Stone, Lapis, and a Glass with a common tartar gem or higher. You'll need at least 500 will in the gem and it will consume 100 of it. The Demon Crystallizer will collect the aura in the chunk that is in and condense 80 of the demonic will aura into a crystal. So if you place it down and wait, you will see a crystal to form. That first vertical crystal is the, is the one you need to click as six other crystals will form around it. As you right click, you will be able to collect the crystals. And this will give you your demon will crystals. To measure exactly how much demon will aura you have in a chunk, you'll need a demon will aura gauge. It can be made with a gold ingot, redstone, glass, and a demon will cluster. With a common tartaric gem or higher, you'll need at least 400 will in the gem and it will consume 50 of it. When you have the demon will aura gauge in your inventory or on your hotbar, in the top left corner, you will see a little meter to show you exactly how much demonic will aura you have in a chunk. The current chunk I'm in has zero of anything. But if I go into the chunk with the crucible, it will show that the bar is full and I am full of demonic will aura. Now if I simply press shift, it will show the numerical value of each. The reason why the top one is showing 100 and the rest are showing zero is because those are the different kinds of demonic wills you can have. And I'll go over exactly how to get those different kinds in another video. The Greater Tartar Gem is made with a common Tartar Gem, Blank Slate, Weak Blood Shard, and a Demon Will Crystal. With a common Tartar Gem or higher, you need at least 1,000 Will in the gem and it will consume 100 of it. The Greater Tartar Gem is able to hold up to 4,096 Demonic Will. The Teleposition Sigil is made by using a Teleposer, a Glowstone Block, a Redstone Block, and a Gold Ingot with a Greater Tartar Gem or higher. You need at least 1,500 Will in the gem, and it will consume 200 of it. Take Ashes, Reagent, and Demonic Slate, and you have your Teleposition Sigil. What the sigil will do is after you right click it to bind it to you, you can link this sigil to any teleposer and work as a return point. And when you activate the sigil by right clicking, it will teleport you back to your home point. So if I make this dual focus teleposer my home point, I have to shift right click and it is now linked. So if I go over to this teleposer and send me to my base, I'm like, you know what, let me quickly head back. I seem to have forgotten something. Boop, now I'm back to my dual focus teleposer. Or you know, let me maybe travel with my little house here. 
So, whoops, need to make a new doorway. And I can go poof, and I'm up here with my nice floating islands. But I want to go back. So let me simply right click, and I'm back. But you know what? Let me make this my focus for my return. So I hold shift and right click again, and now this one's length. So if I decide to travel again with my now callous holding cell, I'm up here with, hey, here's our cow friend. How's it going, buddy? And I can return back, oop, when lag settles down, and I'm now back at my single focus teleposer. So to link it, you have to shift right click, and that will depend where you return to. And it is a only a return trip. For each travel, it will use the same amount of life points that a standard teleposer would use. So depending on how far away you are, if you per se put a teleposer down and link it back to this one, it will work exactly the same if however much blood will be removed then is the same amount of life points it is removed at that point. Boop. Now I'm back. And if there's a teleposer, there, it'll be the same amount. The sigil of suppression is made with a teleposer, water bucket, lava bucket, and a blaze rod. And with a greater tartar gem or a higher, you'll need at least 500 will in the gem, and it will cost 50 of it to make the sigil. Simply go ashes, reagent, and then demonic slate, and you have your sigil of suppression. After binding it to yourself, the sigil, when activated, will temporarily displace any liquid in the immediate air around you, allowing you to walk through. So, we have our nice little pond here. I shift right click to activate, and as you can see, some of the water is now gone. And by walking, it seems to disappear. Point, but you know, our little squid friends are still kind of hanging around. And let's go all the way down. Oh, oh no, they have fallen. And this effect is only temporary, as you can see. Now all of the water in the area is back. And by deactivating it, and waiting for the water to reappear, I can now easily swim back up. But this does not only work on water, it also works on lava. So I'm currently in the nether, and I'm over here, but I want to get over there. By activating the sigil, all the lava around me will simply just disappear. And allow me to walk easily across the ground, and over to my destination, little island over here. Now that I'm over, I can deactivate the sigil, and all the lava will then refill. And poof, it's back. When activated, it will cost 400 life points every 5 seconds. So only keep it active when you really need it. Because if not, it can easily burn through your life points without you knowing it. The sigil of the Phantom Bridge is made of 2 soul sand, 1 stone, and 1 obsidian, and a greater tartar gem or higher. You need at least 600 will in the gem and it will consume 50 of it. Arcane Ashes, Reagent, and a Demonic Slate will give you your sigil of the Phantom Bridge. Now that we're trying to now that we're back in and trying to travel through the nether, the sigil of the Phantom Bridge will be helpful. What this will do is when activated, it will create a layer of blocks for you to walk on that are just hovering in the air. So to demonstrate, I activate it and oh, look at this, some blocks to walk on. Now I can traverse over here. And now I'm where I want to be. But you know what? Let me go over there without having to go around. Activate it and simply run right on over. Now to use the Phantom Bridge, it will cost 100 life points every five seconds. Now that I'm over, and as you run, it will slightly disappear. Now, one thing it won't do is it won't override already existing blocks or liquids, such as the lava here. So, even though I'm trying to walk, it won't override the lava. But if I come up here, I can simply run right over the lava. The Sigil of Ender Severance is made with one eye of Ender one ender pearl and two gold ingots with a greater tartar gem or higher. 
you need at least 800 will in the gem and it will consume 70 of it. Ashes, reagent, and a demonic slate will start the process. And now you have your sigil of ender severance. Your sigil of ender severed it will cost you 200 life points every 5 seconds. When activated, this sigil will stop endermen from teleporting. But it won't stop other means of teleporting like ender pearls or teleposers. And as you can see, we currently have an ender party going on here. So if I now enter survival mode, I am now dropped in with the Enderman. And now with creepers exploding everywhere, I will activate the sigil. And now all these Endermen will not be able to teleport away. So if I just start looking at them. Come on Endermen, look at me. And I start punching them. They will not be able to teleport away. Normally, after a few punches, they probably would teleport it away by now. But they can't now that the sigil is active. So if I go and I turn it off and then I start punching them, you can see a bunch of them start teleporting. But by activating it, now they can't go anywhere. So that is the sigil of Ender Severance. It will stop Endermen from teleporting away. A good way to farm Ender Pearls. The sigil of Haste is made of two cookies, one sugar, and one stone with a greater tartar gem or higher. You will need at least 1,400 will in the gem and it will consume 50 of it. Arcane Ashes, Reagent, and a Demonic Slate will start the process. And now of your Sigil Paste. What this will do is by activating it, it will give you the boost effect. This will increase your speed, increase your jumping capabilities, and provide you with the ability to step up single blocks. Whoop. So, this will just help with your movement all around. While the sigil is active, it will cost you 250 life points every 5 seconds. So if you want to have this on often, you're going to need a good source of life points coming into your orb. The sigil of compression is made with a block of iron, a block of gold, obsidian, and a cobblestone with a greater tartar gem or higher. You need at least 2,000 will in the gem and it will consume 200 of it and this will give you your compression reagent. Ashes, reagent, and a demonic slate will start the process and give you your sigil of compression. When activated, this sigil will compress items in your inventories to their block form if they have reached the amount of a stack. So let's say I want to take these out of here and transfer them to maybe a different chest. So all I do is just take these out and they'll stay in their stacks. But if I start to take out, let's say, this gold, it will start turning it into blocks. And let me say, do the same with redstone. and then coal. If you have over a stack of these, of any item that can be compressed into a block, it will compress those into their block forms and leave you with 55 of each. So if you're out mining and you need to mine a lot of redstone or coal or lapis, and you just have a bunch of those slots taken, just for multiple stacks, they'll be very simply turned into their block form to help save room in your inventory. And now I can come all the way over here to one of my many chests, let's say this one, and then, ooh, this is full. And then this one, and deposit off it in, and now I have it stored. Now, after testing it multiple times with the sigil of compression and leaving it on, I have not found that it actually uses up life points from your network. I'm not sure if this is a glitch or on purpose, but my tests have shown that it does not use life points. 
but depending on if you're playing in a mod pack, those settings might be changed, so just keep an eye on it. Now you have all you need to continue your journey through blood magic. Ooh, here's an enderman. That's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe for more Minecraft guides and the occasional other video. Thank you all for watching and have a good day. Bye. Oop. Hello. Oop. Goodbye.